Hey guys, what is going on? It is Lee Donuts here. So today I wanted to make a video on 10 tips and tricks for Osu that you might not have known. Uh, this is mostly for new players. If you're a seasoned player, then you probably already know most of these things, if not all of them. So let's get right into it. The first tip that I have for you guys is that you can actually press Ctrl plus O uh, on your keyboard to open up the options menu. You can do this in your song select, or a multiplayer room. This is pretty useful if you want to change skins on the fly or you want to change some settings without having to back out to the main menu. Alright, so number two is refreshing skins without having to restart the game completely. Now a lot of people restart their game completely when they make a change to their skin such as turning off a cursor expand, removing follow points, things like that. You actually don't have to close your game and reopen it to refresh a skin. All you have to do is either select another skin and then select the skin that you want to refresh again, or you can press Ctrl plus Shift plus Alt plus S and it will refresh your skin instead of having to restart the game. So number three is during gameplay, you can press Shift and Tab and it will hide the heads up display, meaning that your accuracy as well as your combo and how much time is left on the song will all disappear. Number four is pressing H when viewing replays. Now if you're viewing a replay and you want to get rid of the replay options, you can press H to toggle on and off the replay options. This is pretty useful if you're a YouTuber like me and you want to record uh, one of your plays and you don't want the replay thing in the way, then you can press H to hide the replay options. Alright, so number 5 is actually a tip for reducing input lag. Now, not a lot of people know about this, but if you actually go into your options and uh, toggle on full screen, it'll actually reduce input lag by a lot. Uh, and if you're playing on a resolution that's not your native monitor resolution, like uh, 1280 by 720 when you're on a 1920 monitor, then what you can do is toggle on letterboxing, and what that will do is put a area around your resolution, which allows you to full screen it. Uh, so that's a tip for greatly reducing input lag, as well as toggling unlimited FPS. Um, you can have it, some people have it capped to like 240 or 120, and this will add a lot of input lag. So just setting your FPS uh, cap to unlimited will greatly reduce the input lag. Uh, plus in the detail settings, you want to toggle everything off. Um, some things in here are actually up to player preference, such as snaking sliders. Some players like snaking sliders a lot. Uh, while others don't. Uh, personally, I don't like it on, but detail settings, most of this is pretty distracting, so I just recommend turning all of them off. Uh, again, except for some of the things like sneaking sliders. Alright, so number six is actually a search filter uh, tip. Now, if you have more than like 10,000 maps, or you just have a lot of maps in general, you all know that it's a, it's a pain to find maps that you want, uh, or find a certain difficulty. Well, you can actually use filters in the search bar to greatly help uh, with, you know, finding maps that are either a certain AR, a certain circle size, things like that. So, um, the search filters that you can use are equal sign, which will mean equal to. You can use less than, the less than bracket. Uh, you can use the greater than bracket. You can use less than or equal to. You can use greater than or equal to. You can use an exclamation mark and then an equal sign, which will mean not equal. Or you can use uh, two equal signs, which will mean same as. So the filters that you can be used uh, that can be used in addition to the search terms is you can use AR, which will mean approach rate. You can use CS, which will mean circle size. OD, which is overall difficulty. HP, which is HP drain rate. Keys, which is number of keys for mania stars which is how many stars the map has bpm which is beats per minute length which is how long the song is uh, drain which is the drain time mode which is osu taiko you can spe uh, specify the mode status which is if it's ranked approved pending not submitted things like that uh, played which is time since last played unplayed which is maps that you haven't played yet uh, speed, which is Osumania scroll speed. So, an example of this is 
if I'm trying to find a map that's like AR9, I would do AR equals 9 in the search bar. If I'm trying to find maps that are e either AR9 or above AR9, I would do AR greater than or equal to 9. And then if I wanted to also have some a map that's greater than AR9 or equal to AR9, uh, but also have a CS of 4, I would do AR greater than or equal to 9 space CS equals 4. So that's pretty much how it works. And this will help you guys find maps uh, way easier. And hopefully it will help you guys out. Alright, so number 7 is going to be the beatmap song list. So when you're in the song select and you're scrolling through songs, you might have noticed that different songs have uh, different colors uh, on their rectangles. So they have different colors and you might have been wondering, you know, what do these colors mean? Do they even mean anything? Uh, and yes they do. So there's different colors. There's red, pink, orange, light blue, and white. So if a beatmap is colored red, this means that the beatmap only has one difficulty. If the beatmap is colored pink, then this means that you have not played the beatmap yet. Um, and if the beatmap is colored orange, then that means you've played the beatmap. If it's colored light blue, it means that other beatmaps are in the same set. Uh, if it's white, it means that you currently have the beatmap selected. So. Yeah, that's pretty much what they mean, and I, I know a long time ago, I used to like theorize that orange meant like it's ranked, and white meant it's like unranked and things like that, but in reality, that's what the colors represent. Alright guys, so for tip number 8, it's going to be offsets. Now, if you guys didn't already know how to set offsets, pretty much all you do is when you're starting a song, you press either your minus key or your plus key. And what that will do is it will set an offset that's either negative or positive based on which one you hit uh, by increments of five. Now, if you want to go by increments of one, all you have to do is hold down the alt key and press either the positive or the negative, and it will be going by increments of one. So pretty much what offset does is it compensates or it helps you comp compensate for if you're hitting early or if you're, if you're hitting late. So if you're hitting notes late, um, then you would use uh, a positive offset. If you're hitting notes early, then you would use a negative offset. And that's pretty much all offset does. And uh, I guess while we're on the topic of holding alt, you can also hold down alt for your volume rocker. So if you're using your arrow keys, your up and down arrow keys to change uh, the volume, your master volume, you can hold down alt and then use your right and left arrow keys to bounce between the music and effects. Uh, so you can also change the volume of that with your volume rocker. All right, so number nine is uh, the how to undo a random select. So this is a feature added a while ago because of a lot of people requesting it, but a lot of people still don't know about it. So when you're pressing F2 to scroll through random maps, we all have the moment where you find a map or you scroll onto a map that you really like, but then you accidentally press F2 again and then it randomizes again and you want to go back to the song previous to that one. So how you're going to go about doing this is all you have to do is hold down shift and press F2 again and it will go back and undo your random select. So if you're just scrolling through songs and you find one that you really like but you skip over by mistake, then you can hold shift, press F2 and it'll go back to it. Alright, number 10 is the key to hide osu. Now, if something you know pops up on your screen that you might not want other people to see and there's someone maybe in the room then you can press insert to hide the osu to the notification area in your task tray uh, which is I haven't found it too useful but uh, having uh, in the options I think it's like a confined mouse cursor when in full screen if you have that on alt tab will do the same thing but if you have it on never then alt tab won't do the same thing uh, and you'll have to press the insert key. So by default it is on the insert key, um, it will hide it to your notification area. You can change the key to anything you want, uh, like any other key, but yeah that's pretty much the key to hide your osu. So that's pretty much it guys, that was the 10 tips and tricks for osu. I hope you guys learned something from this video and if you didn't I'm sorry, um, but I hope it helped everyone else out. Uh, if you liked the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, 
If you have any other things, any other tips that people might want to know, you can go ahead and leave them in the comments and uh, maybe you can help someone out. So that's pretty much it guys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.